Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and today we're taking a look at the gaming skill. The gaming skill is unlocked in World 5, and there's only a few mechanics to it, but your primary goal in gaming is to generate pixels that can be used as a currency in various other parts of the game. But most of your pixels will go back into gaming to upgrade the various multipliers. Most of your interaction in the gaming skill will happen on this screen, and this is where we grow our plants that we can then harvest to generate gaming pixels. Each of these plants do have different bonuses, but more on that when we get to the mutations a little bit later. A few important pieces of information on this first screen is in the top left-hand corner. Starting with the plant counter in the very left side, this shows the current number of plants you have grown, as well as the maximum possible plants for your current game board. The Water Droplet, Golden Nugget, and Acorn all correspond to different benefits that you unlock through the Imports tab, and we'll go over those individually a little later. Next up, you do have a Harvest All button, but there's a few things that you need to know before you use the Harvest All button, and that's mainly the order that we should be harvesting our plants, and this will make a little bit more sense when we get to the Mutations tab. After that, you do have the pixels in the top right hand corner, and this is how many of the pixels you currently have in your inventory. And these can be used either in gaming itself, or they can be used in things like alchemy and divinity. And lastly, we do have the logbook button, and this is one thing we'll go over right now. The logbook is a multiplier that you gain as you discover new plants and new levels of plants. So each plant that you unlock will have four different levels and every plant that you can grow gives you another multiplier to the number of pixels that you have. It's very important in early game that when you unlock a new plant that you let it grow all the way to the maximum level at least one time as this will give you a decent multiplier. I currently have 28 of the 72 and I'm getting almost nine times more pixels just for having these plants grown. So back on the main screen, we're going to start going over the different multipliers that you can unlock to increase your gaming pixel gains. Starting with the fertilizer tab in the top right hand corner, you have three options to spend your pixels on early game. These options are unlocked as soon as you unlock the gaming skill, but there is a priority system I would use to get the most out of this tab. My first priority would always be increasing your garden's capacity. This allows you to grow more plants, which means every time you're checking back the game, you have the potential for more plants, and that means more pixels overall. My second priority would be increasing the base value of your plants, and I would definitely spend more points overall into this than on your growth cycle. The base value is the multiplier for all of your different multipliers in the game, so as you increase the base value, your imports are better, your mutations are better, and overall you'll gain a lot more pixels by spending your pixels into here. The third option depends on how often you're playing the game. If you're playing and you're checking your gaming skill every hour or two, then spending an equivalent value into your growth cycle as you do to your base value is a good thing. However, if you're only checking the game every day or two, then putting a lot less into your growth cycle is recommended as there is a maximum level of evolution on your plants. Your plants can only evolve four times and currently at 1.74 hours, I can be at the maximum growth cycle on all my plants in less than a day, even with a lower chance to get to each evolution level. So next up is the mutations tab, and this is where we unlock the potential to grow new plants. This is completely random and there's no way to influence which plants will grow. So it is very necessary to unlock the mutations as soon as possible as each of these mutations are better than the base level leaf plant. When you unlock the mutations tab fairly early, the first thing you'll need to do is spend the DNA splices that you gain from harvesting your plants to have a percentage chance to unlock the next mutation. Initially, this will take just a few 10 to 20 of them to unlock the fungi. However, each further one will require more and more splices for a decent chance. Where I'm currently at on the seventh mutation, with about 400 DNA splices, I'm only getting about a 3% chance to unlock the next mutation. And the last one is going to be even worse than that. Each of the mutations do have a new benefit for you. As I said, the growth is completely random, but uh, they are good to unlock. The fungi just gives us more pixels when picked, but no gaming EXP. 
the bonsai gives more pixels per evolution. The blossom gives us more pixels and more gaming EXP. And then the cactus and verasse have some unique benefits. The cactus allows us to increase the growth cycle of plants around it instantly, and the higher evolution of the cactus, the more growth cycles it can trigger. The Verasi is kind of another unique bonus, which when you harvest the Verasi, it has a chance to instantly grow a new plant. This can be used really well in combination with the cactus, but a little bit more on that later when we go over your harvesting order. And the last one I've unlocked is the berry bush, which just gives seven times more pixels and more gaming EXP. So as you can see, these mutations are really good for us, uh, but it is something that is random, so don't pay too much attention to it. Lastly, we do have one more section, which is to increase the chance to evolve with each growth cycle. And this is just another way to spend your pixels. I would say that this is more important than your overall growth cycle as you, this higher chance is a good way to get more out of your benefits. The chance does go up relatively slow. I think it starts out around 10% and 70 levels in, I'm gaining another 6%. So don't expect too much from it, but it is a nice, another, a nice bonus that you can grab a hold of. And for our last tab, we have the Imports tab. This is where we're going to unlock all of the extra bonuses that you see on the screen, such as the sprinkler, the shovel, the squirrel, the seashell, and the rock. Each of these do require different amounts of pixels to unlock. The sprinkler is very early in the game and its main bonus is it allows you to instantly grow sprouts. However, it does need time to recharge and by spending more pixels into upgrading it, you can increase the recharge time by 1% per upgrade. The cost does scale relatively slow, so uh, but it does get up there in the amount of pixels that you need. A little bit more on this, we'll go over the way that we grow and harvest plants after we go through the multipliers. But moving on to our dirty shovel next, this is the second bonus that you'll unlock. And this unlocks the golden nugget at the top of the screen. And basically the more upgrades you put into this, the higher chance you can get a, to, to get a bigger nugget. Um, more upgrades will basically increase the minimum value, uh, but the maximum value is always there. So even at lower levels, you can get a very high multiplier. It's just a very low chance. But as you upgrade the shovel, you'll notice that you start getting higher level nuggets more frequently. The third box will allow you to unlock the Autumn Squirrel, and this is a way to gather another currency, the acorns at the top. The acorns are spent to upgrade two different multipliers for more base pixels and also to increase the growth rate of your plants, very similar to the fertilizer tab. But spending more pixels into your autumn squirrel will allow you to find more acorns and allow you to upgrade that multiplier a little bit further, a little bit easier. So moving on to our next benefit, which is the elegant seashell. This is one of the best things you can unlock. And I would even spend a couple days to unlock this as soon as possible. Uh, this gives you more pixels per rank and you upgrade the rank of the shell by evolving plants while it's active on the board. So the earlier you can unlock this, the more evolutions that you'll go through and the more of a multiplier that you'll get. Each upgrade to this will give you 1% more per rank. I believe I'm at rank eight right now, so I'm gaining 160% um, more pixels just because I have the seashell and that's only going to continue to increase. The last box that I've currently unlocked is the Kitsune Roxy, and this is a interesting multiplier. Uh, basically, if you're checking the game more frequently, the Kitsune Roxy is very good. Uh, plants grow faster, but they give less pixels. But if you're checking often enough, then you can gain more pixels, pixels overall. However, you need to be checking uh, every 30 minutes to every hour. So during your active play time, when you're near the game or you can check it frequently, it's very good to have. And there's a couple ways that we can increase the benefit from the Roxy. Um, however, it's not something that I would focus on if you're not able to check the game very frequently. So back on our main screen here, we're gonna go over how all of these different benefits work together. Um, but the main thing that we need to go over is the proper harvesting order of your plants. There are two special plants that we need to pay attention to mainly, and that is the Verasi here that looks like a little uh, man-eating flower, and then your cactuses. 
with the veracity we want to try to grow these or to harvest these first as that will allow us to have the chance to grow new plants and to do this we want to harvest a couple leaves the best way to do this is harvest things around your cactuses to give the best chance of a new plant growing near the cactuses the other option is if there's nothing near your cactus harvest the ones farther away and that will allow you to again benefit the most from the cactus so we'll harvest a couple leaves here to unlock slots to grow from our, our Varasi, and we'll harvest our Varasi next. And that grew three new leaves for us, and that will allow us then to move on to our cactuses. The next thing to note is your cactuses evolve all of the plants around them, and this can be also used on cactuses themselves. So for this example, I really wanna upgrade this cactus as that will allow it to reach the mushroom and reach a little further out. So we'll harvest these cactuses that are a little farther away first. And now I have another new evolution on our cactus and another new evolution on our fungi. Then at this point, there's nothing else that's special. So we can just click harvest all and increase our overall gains. The next important thing to pay attention to is your sprinkler. As your AFK or you use any AFK uh, boost, you will gain more water droplets. When you use your sprinkler, it will spend your water droplets and grow plants equivalent to the number of water droplets that you have. If you've unlocked the golden sprinkler in the gym shop, you do have a chance to not spend the water droplets that you have, which can allow you to have multiple growth cycles using the same water droplets. I didn't gain any special plants here, so at this point I can just harvest all of these and move on to the next benefit. So next up is the Dirty Shovel, and this is a base level multiplier, however there is a catch for it. Um, as you're away from the game for an hour, you'll unlock the ability to harvest one new golden nugget, but it requires two further hours, so three hours total, to gain two nuggets and then four hours for the third nugget. So you do want to check back to the game as frequently as you can, but if you're unable to, you can still collect this as often as you can. Um, each of the golden nuggets is a random number generator and you have a chance at gaining higher level golden nuggets, but it's not guaranteed. I currently have a multiplier of 479, which is 470 times, uh, 479 times more pixels is all it means. Uh, but my goal is to upgrade my imports dirty shovel so that I get a bigger nugget and that will allow me to have a higher overall multiplier. This is something I would unlock and check back as frequently as possible. Next up is the squirrel, and this is another passive generator. As you upgrade the imports for the squirrel, it will generate more acorns for you, and then you spend these acorns to either upgrade more pixels from your plants or your plants grow faster. I would definitely spend more pixel or more acorns into giving more pixels as the plant growth really depends on how frequently you're checking the game. Uh, this is completely passive, but you won't gain your acorns until you actually click on the squirrel at least once when you log in. Our fourth benefit is from the Elegant Seashell, and this is another passive bonus for us. All we have to do is unlock it, and then it does everything for us. Basically, as plants evolve near it, it will count the evolutions. No matter if you're offline, it will count each stage of the evolution, and more evolutions means more rank. More rank uh, multiplies the bonus that you have in the Imports tab. 728 evolutions done so far, and uh, I'm almost to rank eight. So this will grow relatively quickly and you'll get huge gains from unlocking this as soon as possible. Our last benefit comes from the Kitsune Rock, and this is one of them that is a little tricky. It's not very useful while you're AFK, but if you're online or actively playing or checking back very frequently, you can gain a lot of benefit from this. While the board is completely cleared, you can activate the rock. However, if there's any plants on here, you cannot turn the rock on or off. So I'll need to harvest all of these plants before I can actually deactivate this. Keep in mind that while it's active, you are gaining less pixels from each plant, but if you're checking back frequently enough, it can be very worth it. So let's go through the worlds now and find ways we can increase our gaming gains, starting with the stamps in World 1. You do have the Game Joy stamp to increase your gaming EXP. Gaming EXP isn't super important, but it is a way that you can get a little bit more from it. 
Unfortunately, there's no statues for gaming, so moving on to World 2. In Alchemy, we have two bubbles that are pretty useful, starting with the Gamer at Heart bubble. This is a large bubble, so it does need to be equipped, but any character that has it equipped has a chance to gain gaming progress equal to the amount of AFK gains that you claim on that character. This is really useful, and there's a few of these bonuses that stack up in the game, and I'll show you how to make the most of this at the end of the video. The second bubble is the bit by bit bubble, which is the third yellow bubble released with World 5, and this gives you more gaming pixels for each level of that alchemy bubble. In the vials, you do have two vials that are relatively useful if you can unlock them, uh, starting with the dust moat, and this is a catching um, item that you'll need, but it gives you more gaming EXP, 3% uh, gaming EXP per level of that vial. The second vial is the Uzi Soul vial, and this gives you 1% more bits for, in, um, for each level of the vial. Uh, keep in mind that vials are doubled by the laboratory bonus, so they can be relatively useful for more gaming progress. Also in World 2 is the post office with the gaming loot crate. It does require a lot of boxes here, but it does give you another benefit that stacks really well with the Gamer at Heart Alchemy Bubble. This gives you 9% of your AFK gains count towards gaming as well. Uh, again, I'll show you how all of this stacks up to work really well at the end of the video. There's currently no bonuses in World 3, so moving on to World 4. You have three dinner meals that can be really useful for gaming, starting with the Head Chef Bread, which gives you roughly 4% more bits gained from each plate level of the Head Chef Bread. After that, you have the Giant Tomato to give you 5% more gaming EXP per plate level, and lastly, the Saucy Sausage to give you 6% more bits gained for each plate level in the dinner menu. Moving on to World 5, there are two artifacts you can unlock in sailing, and the first comes from Candied Island, which is the Gummy Orb. This gives you more gaming bits for de depending on how much progress you have in the slab. And the second one comes from Cloudy Quay, which gives you the Weather Book, which gives you more bits in gaming based on your gaming level. These artifacts are relatively late game, so I wouldn't focus too much time into gaining them too early. However, when you do unlock them, they are a nice bonus for you. From Divinity, you have one statue that actually benefits gaming, which is the Permep statue. The linked bonus gives your entire account more gaming plant growth speed. This bonus is based on your Divinity level. It can be up to 50% more growth speed. However, that is very late game. One thing to keep note of is there are a few Divinity statues that will require gaming pixels to upgrade. For the last benefits that directly affect gaming, we have three talents on the Divine Knight class, and they are Undying Passion, which gives us a chance to get gaming progress when we're claiming our AFK gains. Next up, we have Thousand Hours Played for more overall gaming EXP. And lastly, Biddy Liddy, which gives us more bits gained. This is a bonus that is applied no matter which character you're actually actively playing on. However, these talents do need to be on an active preset on one of your characters. I recommend putting these talents on a character that's stuck in the lab or on the Divinity Altar, as you can still gain these even if you're collecting these benefits on, say, a Shaman. For one last tip, we have a way to maximize our gains in gaming, and this is by using the talent from the Divine Knight as well as the Alchemy Bubble to gain more gaming progress when we're claiming our AFK gains. To do this, we need to go into the gaming menu and activate the Kitsune Rock. So you will need to harvest the plants you currently have, and once they're harvested, we can activate the rock. The next step is to log on to a different character. Any character that has at least an hour of progress, you can log on as long as those bubbles are activated. When we're claiming our AFK gains, we have a chance for more gaming progress. I didn't get any on this character, so we'll move on until we gain some progress. So here we got 98 hours of progress for gaming, so we'll collect our loot and then head back over to our character to check our gaming progress. And as you see, all of my plants are completely grown up now. This can be useful even collecting one hour of AFK gains. You can collect several evolutions worth of time because our Kitsune Rock really maximizes the time that we gain from those AFK progress gains. 
This is not so useful where I have a couple days worth of time, but if you have an hour's worth of progress, I bet you'll notice a couple new plants popping up on, on your gaming board as long as this rock is active. Keep in mind, we are going to gain less bits from this, so I would be checking back frequently. Um, I wouldn't claim anything more than about a day of AFK progress with the Kitsune rock active. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this type of content. And a huge shout out to our Patreon members that support the work we do. Thank you from all of us here at Nocturne Gaming. If you would like to become a patron and get some added benefits, check out the link in the description. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below for me, and we'll see you next time.